in the 1980s in india something important was happening i was born and growing up <laughs> i was a curious little girl who loved to play in the mud and conduct scientific experiments one day as i was playing i noticed that an insect had died and there were these ants that were coming chipping off pieces and carrying the remains back to their nest i got closer and curious why aren't they eating it right away so i placed an obstacle on their way back let's see what happens to my surprise the ants didn't give up all hope and start eating it neither did they look depressed or upset they just found another way and not only did one ant find it the entire colony knew about it and not even a single ant was stuck on the old path how are they able to adapt so easily fast forward to when i was a graduate student in artificial intelligence at iit one of the world's most selective programs and the top technical institute in india one of the cultural things in india is that we love our national sport do you know what's the national sport of india it's not cricket it's drinking tea <laughs> and i am particularly good at it since i didn't have a fridge in my dorm room i would keep milk powder and the ants are back they love the milk powder but this time i was determined to win i found all the hardest to find spots i put it on the top of the closets i double boxed it i even hid it in my difficult math books they still found it so one day as i'm grudgingly lying on my bed contemplating should i get up go and buy another packet of milk i think to myself how did we get here on one hand i'm working on artificial intelligence algorithms in which finding the optimal solution is proving to be so hard we keep approximating the natural environment to make it easy for ourselves and on the other there are these ants in the natural environment coordinating communicating and adapting so effectively so i got up and started digging in this time not in the mud but metaphorically by studying ant behavior here's what i found some ant species drop chemical indicators called pheromones these pheromones think of them like a breadcrumb trail hansel and gretel style for other ants to learn from other ants experiences so that every ant doesn't have to blindly wander around and can collectively leverage the knowledge of the rest of the colony we humans we sort of do the same thing we don't start from zero we build on others knowledge in fact the tendency to follow ma paths more strongly marked by others around us forms initial bias both in ants and for us just think about how many of your everyday choices and perspectives on brands technologies and products are formed by others markers in the form of reviews likes and views behavior development theorists will call this observational learning initial bias extends to even what we believe to be subconscious truths what does a successful life look like what do i need to do to be a good parent a good child a good spouse a good partner a good employee our answers to these big questions are heavily influenced by the markers of our peers our ancestors and also what our personal contingency reinforcement history has been the more successful we have been on a path the more likely we are to get locked in 
and the harder it becomes to let it go. This is when contingency shaped behaviors go on autopilot. Autopilot's great. It's relaxing, it's easy, till we hit turbulence. Situations change. We lose that job, that personal relationship. The world around us changes. Technology landscape morphs. Nobody wants our skills anymore. Our business model, strategy, and that path stop working. And then we are stuck. Stuck on a path that had been so successful for so long. Why is it that we find it so hard to let go when tiny ants unapologetically adapt? Nature. Nature is resilient, nature adapts, nature is diverse. Nature has taught ants that benefits from specific paths will go away. Changes, inevitable. So when ants drop pheromones to mark food sites, they also mark many, many paths to create a map of sorts a road navigation system that reminds them that there are many paths. Their purpose is not to love any specific single path. Their purpose is to find food. There's a clever hack. The evaporation rate for the pheromones that ants use to mark food size is much shorter. Those trails die off quickly if the paths stop working. The evaporation rate for the paths, stays longer, much longer. Maps don't change that often. Isn't this absolutely fascinating? <laughs> like it was to me. So I did what any normal human being would do. I did a PhD on this. OK, maybe any normal graduate student in AI would do. And here's what I explored. Just like ants and humans, we don't start from zero. Could we teach AI agents to build on other agents' knowledge? I figured out the maths for when colonies switch and taught AI agents to do just that. I created an AI algorithm that would allow AI agents to autonomously detect when a newer, better path was available, and switch to it. In the end, I did win the award for the top PhD in the country. <laughs> However, little did I realize that life had planned an unexpected irony and life lesson for me. I had been dreaming about working at a hedge fund at Wall Street. I dreamt whether stock prices, are they really all the aggregate sum of the markings left by others? Would I be the one to model and predict that? I was fascinated with all the stories and perceptions, and I considered it the ultimate stamp of success. So when the opportunity came, I traveled across the world to work at a hedge fund in New York City. You already know it's not going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> I became a zombie. <laughs> but despite that, I failed to see that for my career success, I also had many paths. I had become so fixated on achieving success on that one path that it seemed at the time that if I did not get success on that path, I could not get success on any other path. How ironic. 
that I gave AI agents the ability to autonomously detect and switch to better paths, and I failed to see that I could do the same. Finally, an intervention happened <laughs> that made me realize that the primary reinforcers were no longer there. And for my map, well, the technical skills, knowledge, self-realization that I had gained from walking that path could allow me to turbocharge my map and have since stayed with me that I have since walked many paths. Unfortunately, I have reason to believe I'm not the only one who has these tendencies. I work as an AI, say, AI scientist at the forefront of change. We create technologies that morph companies' business models, operating models, and how jobs get done today. And I see some of the same fixations whether it be for an algorithm or a technology that's the cure-all for all business problems, or it's the love for a process, a product, or how a job is done today. In our lives, in our businesses, in our societies, we have to decide whether we want to love a specific path or do we free ourselves up to build and love our map instead? Benefits from specific paths will go away. The world will transform. But we are designed to be resilient and adaptive. If only we trust in our maps beyond specific paths. Let's not hang on to our initial biases. Let's keep exploring keep adapting, keep building our maps. For when we do that, could we not take a step towards some of our big societal inertias? Every day, we engage on many societal paths, some we believe to be unalterable truths. Geographic definitions of nations in a highly connected digital world. Our schools feeding every neurodiverse mind using the same standard way the standard prescriptive structured life path we expect from all young adults. Some have been in practice for hundreds of years. Are they still optimal or are we stuck? Is it time we got off those paths and found more newer, more optimal solutions for our evolving societies? Let's not apologize for change. Let's surround ourselves with diverse perspectives and change agents who have knowledge of other paths. Let's introduce change if the paths aren't changing that much by themselves. And let's be ready with our map for the change comes. Which path do you need to let go to reach your purpose? Thank you.